All right, here's part two of retopologizing within Max. And as you can see, I'm going to start working straight on the bottom lip since I pretty much showed you how I did the top lip. And since you should know how to do everything by now, I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'm just going to go into error correcting and showing you what to happen if you get one. Two errors just occurred. One, when you use the topology tool too close to another mesh, uh, it creates a quad with that other polygon. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just something you want to be careful about when you're drawing out these topology lines. You might not want it to automatically snap to the closest one. So keep that in mind. If it happens, there's a simple fix for it, though, most of the time. I haven't encountered every situation, so I don't want to act like I have, but there's usually something quick and easy to do to fix it. Also, if you draw a topology line and you make a mistake, do not press Control z Just hold control and click that line. Control Z will not undo your last topology line. Again, I'm working in 3D Studio Max 2010, so I don't know if they've changed this in later versions, but that's the scenario for me. So as you can see, the topology lines, they kind of snap to another polygon. Uh, I don't really want this. I want there to be a loop there or a gap there, so I'm just going to select that edge and split it from the edge sub object mode. and you know do what I did before drag them along to match the curvature of the lip also what I told remember how I was telling you symmetry is in the end all be all and he there here's why um, that hole is a huge problem if you send that to ZBrush you're gonna get some subdivision errors you wanna make sure everything is as airtight as possible and even while you're retopologizing you know once you're done with this just go back and check the center center loops to make sure everything is behaving like it's supposed to. You just want to have one good solid loop if possible. Might not necessarily be one, but you want to make sure your loops are connecting the way they're supposed to or the way you expect them to. So doing some more adjusting. Right now I'm just kind of being nitpicky. This is kind of necessary but since I'm just trying to do a tutorial I think I kind of went overboard here alright so now that the corner pieces are lined up we can use the extend tool to quickly drag between two edges to create a polygon in order to do that just hold control and shift at the same time and drag between them and I'm going to use extend a little bit more to drag out an edge you can also use extend to drag around vertices but I keep clicking back and forth because I got into the habit of doing that should probably stop doing that but you can use I think each of these tools has a function to drag around verts. But it's just a lot easier with the the drag feature. So doing what I did with the top lip and just like dragging out as far as I can. Also, if you have like perpendicular edges, which I think is kind of not the right term for this, but it's the best term I could think of, uh, you could drag out between those perpendicular edges to make a new polygon. Makes making edge loops or edge rings really easy especially around areas such as the mouth so very very convenient and nifty feature they have there and again just drag between two edges to create that polygon so now we have the mouth i um, just gonna use swift loop and add a few edge loops again depending on what you're using this for will depend on how many edge loops you need if you're using it for sculpting you might want to keep them more square than this if you're using this for game you might want to keep it a little bit more optimized than this so forth and so forth so I'm collapsing it all but first I'm gonna drag these verts back hope this was supposed to give me an error in ZBrush but ZBrush picked up on it and fixed it Sometimes what will happen is a uh, part of the mesh will be too far from the high poly mesh and it won't project right. But I guess that wasn't the case in this example. Should have made it more extreme, but wasn't really thinking about it at the time. But I go over it again. So in my editable poly mode, I select edges and I start using the quick loop to see if you know all the loops are one. And as you can tell, I have an error. That was supposed to go all the way up the loop, all the way up the lip. So let's see what the error is. If we go to our vertex mode, you can tell that there are, well, you probably might not be able to see. That's why I'm going to change this to red. There are two very close vertices to each other. Not a huge problem, but this is what you want to take care of because this will give you problems later on. 
So just gonna select that vert and press delete to get, I mean, backspace to get rid of it. And so now I'll test it again, and everything is spick and span. Change this back to blue. All right, so for the most part, our lips are ready to go into ZBrush now. It's something I've made a habit out of doing, and I'm just gonna reset the X form. I, I'd rather do it and not need it than need it and not do it, so just just do it. <laughs> so when we get it back into ZBrush, it's gonna pick up all this info, even that mole on the side, and project it onto this low poly mesh. So go to go Z, go Z brush, and there's your low poly mesh. In all its low poly glory. So now we're going to select uh, the high poly mesh and add this as a sub tool. And I'll walk you. I'll walk you through the steps. Through uh, the steps to retopologize this. So here are our previous lips. You can tell now. Now the wireframe looks very messed up in comparison to the new low poly meshes wireframe. So we click a pen and add our new lips. As you can see, they're kind of conforming, and ZBrush is just going to push those points where they need to be pushed. It's also going to transfer the color information, which will make texturing this a lot easier. But before you start subdividing, one thing you got to take care of is uh, when you start subdividing in ZBrush, you lose a lot of volume, and it ends up pushing a lot of your outer rings or m points places where you didn't want them to go at all. So that can become a problem, especially if you specifically place some points at a certain spot. Tongue twister. <laughs> so real quick, I'm just going to store a morph target on the lowest subdivision level and then start subdividing. Now you see it's doing it again, right? Well, just going to go back down to the first subdivision and hit switch. And that's going to push those points on the lowest subdivision back to where they once were. I made a slight mistake here and that was I went back up to subdivision levels again. Um, don't do that. <laughs> After you switch, just keep it on that division until you hit project. So now we have both the mesh and the low, the, both the high poly mesh and the low poly mesh visible. Make sure your low poly mesh or meshes, keep that in mind, your low poly mesh, no, your high poly mesh or meshes, make sure they're visible before you hit project. If not, then this will have nothing to project to. Now the reason I say meshes is you can use multiple high poly meshes to project on and just in case you're trying to like put a boot over, you know, a low poly boot over an entire boot, a tongue, and some shoestrings. Those are multiple meshes, but you want it to be covered in one mesh, so that's an easy way to do it. So as you can see, I'm starting to project. It was supposed to be give me an error there, but it didn't. But if you're reprojecting and you start noticing holes, um, for one, start on low, always start on the lowest subdivision. That That helps me out. And two, if you're still noticing holes, just use the clay brush to push those holes up or down and then hit the reproject button again. The problem is that those parts, those points are too far away f for ZBrush to notice them and bring to the high res mesh. So just help ZBrush out a little bit and push it closer for it. So we're going to make the mesh visible again. Go up to the next subdivision, hit project all again and keep doing this up the line until all the details that we need are there. Another thing to keep in mind is you might want to polish even when you're done with all this just double check and polish your mesh because ZBrush is so good at projecting that it will project even the facets if your mesh isn't faceted. What I mean by that is like if you have that mole right there say for instance it was uh, if it was faceted because there wasn't a lot enough detail in the base mesh it wouldn't be faceted if you had enough edge loops, so it would be it would be smooth if you had enough edge loops to begin with. So just double check because you don't want something that could be smooth end up with a faceted look and have like a million polys in it. If you're getting that, just go to the deformations panel and just use polish on like a low level, like one or two, depending on your mesh. So now now we got our lips separated, we could we can move these guys for animation. I'm not really all that great at this, unfortunately, but if you are great at making lips move, then this will definitely help you. But again, it doesn't just apply to lips. This could apply to anything. 
anything. Like, I don't even want to start listing stuff because anything. <laughs> and there we got our new Reach Apologize lips. From here, we could do uh, anything we want. We could make a game mesh out of these. We could start building the rest of the head from this. Wouldn't recommend that. But uh, we could if we wanted to. And thanks to ZBrush, you could just extract a normal map or cavity map, displacement map, even a texture map from this. Or if you wanted to get a little gutsy, you could export this in the low poly version to X normal and bake out a normal map, AO map, texture map, what have you. So again, the possibilities are up to you. But this is where the retopology with ZBrush and 3D Studio Max ends. So I hope you've enjoyed and learned this and see you next time.